of River Plate goes up to have a word with referee Ricardo Calabria. And of course, uh, as much as it's a player's ambition to play in a derby game like this one, it's also an official's ambition to be given charge of a match like this. The rain teeming down in the River Plate Stadium as the first free kick is awarded to the home side. It was De Silva who tried to get up there and the ball looped beyond him. And now it's knocked back towards the edge of that Boca Juniors penalty area and a little touch off the knee of Zamora. Zamora starting in the River Plate lineup. He's been substitute on many occasions. There's a close-up of Hector Enrique for you. Widely tipped to be a member of the 22-strong squad that will go to Italy. And indeed, I think we're probably looking at at least half a dozen players out here who will be on the plane. Argentina, of course, as the reigning world champions will kick off in those World Cup finals in Milan on June the 8th in the very first match against the Cameroons. There's a good turn by Zamora. And a good ball too, played with the outside of the boot. And the cross is a little disappointing there from Corti over the top of the crossbar. Corti Rodriguez... So many of these players have two names that they go under, so don't be fooled by the captions. And, uh, once more, Zamora couldn't quite control it that time. Played out here to La Torre. It shows good control. And these players do just love to clip the ball with the outside of the boot. Well done by Da Silva. It's a highly animated referee. I suppose they get caught up in the fever of the occasion as much as the players do. Imperative not to make an early mistake in a derby game like this one. Boca being just on the outskirts of Buenos Aires, which is the home, of course, of River Plate. Well, this match very much in the River Plate Stadium, which is also the national stadium. And the scene of that memorable 1978 World Cup final. Batista lunges forward and is taken out of the play by Marangoni. And Batista seems to have been such a fearsome and formidable figure in Argentine football over the years. One of those who's preferred to stay at home rather than earn his money in Europe. So many of River have uh, Argentina's top players applying their trade in Europe at the moment, of course. Oh, and there was a good little flick on and Zamora trying to get onto the end of it. Just couldn't get there ahead of Navarro Montoya. A little bit of an aimless ball forward. And he'll get the bird for that sort of a pass back. whistle and hoot any uh, indiscretions by any Boca Juniors players on this occasion. That's surely a free kick. But for all the fact they're lying second in the table, River Plate haven't really put together the sort of form which uh, threatens to tear everybody else away this season. They've been right up there all season, but somehow their performances have lacked a little bit of inspiration. This will be another free kick. So they're certainly getting the upper hand in those awards.
sometimes it does take an eternity for free kicks to be taken. However, this one will be delivered eventually by Serizuela. And they've had to make a change of River Plate in the back four because Hugo De Leon is away playing for his country, Uruguay, in the Marlborough Cup in Miami, Florida. But uh, such are the resources, that's going to be a corner. Such are the resources that River Plate have so many players they can bring in. They can almost always replace one international with another. And they have the encouragement of a corner kick here. Which uh, is delivered and safely held by Navarro Montoya. One of the more colourful goalkeepers in South America at the moment. Well, they do seem to specialise in them. He's taken over, of course, from Hugo Gatti, El Loco, as he was known in the Boca Juniors goal for so many, many years. This is Cachufo. Great ball hit out to that far side. Tremendous pass. And not a bad-looking cross either, and the goalkeeper wasn't sure. And he's going to have to catch it under some duress. It uh, came off the head of Carlos Enrique. There's the cross, and it was a very quick move, started by Cuchufo, carried on on that uh, touchline, and the ball looping in the air, and uh, an easy one in the end for Comitso to handle. For the first sign of pressure from Boca. You can see the conditions here are quite deplorable at the moment. Hardly conducive for good football, although players will tell you they prefer to play in heavy rain than heavy winds. At least they can judge the bounce and flight of the ball. And this will be the first free kick that Boca Juniors have been awarded. The man who'll take it will be Ponce, the number 10. A very creative player. What could he conjure up from this? The run inside the area was made by Giunta, backed by Stafuzza, Marangoni. Well, they're keeping it going. Nice little touch from Ponce, and he'll be onside if he can reach it. The ball held up, actually, so the rain is having an effect. Difficult to keep the ball down, of course, on the turn like that. But uh, La Torre didn't do at all badly. And see how the ball holds up here. It might well have gone dead on another occasion, but with this rain pounding down, it held up, came back here, and Latore, a difficult one to hit on the turn. He got the power behind it, but he just couldn't get the elevation right. Well, back passing might become rather ill-advised later in the match if the rains persist. So, Stafutza, they keep pinging the ball out to that left side. And Ponce keeps the move going. So does Junta. And now they're arrested in midfield. And Da Silva challenging back, but there were too many of them. He got in the way of his own man, Corti. And that seems to be the heaviest part of the pitch over there as Rodriguez comes sliding in. One or two uh, uncomfortable moments for the River Plate defence. Very unseasonal rain, this, in the middle of the Buenos Aires summer. Marangoni decides that uh, defence is the best form of attack for the moment. Simon. And that wasn't a good touch. And De Silva almost profited. And indeed, here come River Plate, snapping on the end of that loose ball. The cross, he must be offside, Mr Zamora. The flag went up on the far side. Oh. Well, that's not uh, conducive to get on with the referee, kicking the ball away like that.
And that shot really does give you an idea of just how hard the rains are beating down here in the River Plate Stadium. It's a good job as cover over on that far side for the spectators. If not for them, they don't seem too bothered, do they? And again, you're always going to get players slipping as Stafutza did there. Taken on by Borelli. And he's slithering in the sliding as well. A scramble down there at the moment just needs uh, somebody though to break the deadlock and almost done there Da Silva had the chance not as calm as you like and that was how they were almost caught in some disarray Bocca Baptista will battle for it but the whistle sounded free kick to Bocca Juniors and the players are already Absolutely drenched, but let's have another look here. The break made down the right, and Da Silva literally a toe poke away from putting River Plate into the lead. And then the defender was very, very calm indeed, wasn't he? Graziani out on this side now, Latore. Poor cross, though. Straight to a man in a white shirt. going for the return we'll be happy enough to get the throw in so no goals as yet quite a lively start though with Da Silva coming very close at the one end for River Plate and uh, Bocca having created a chance at the other end too And into space, he's onside. They were looking for the flag there and it wasn't forthcoming and a really spectacular attempt. Well, that was a marvellous bicycle kick. The ball didn't quite find the net, as was intended, but let's have a look now. There is La Torre's cross. And a truly spectacular effort. But just wide of the mark. It deserved better. The athleticism certainly had to be admired. And the uh, River Plate players are still complaining to the referee that uh, he and the linesman should have saved them the embarrassment of that moment. They wanted an offside flag, it didn't come. Marangoni and uh, Giunta it was in the end. He again got it well. And the left back who keeps coming forward for Boca Juniors is Cachufo. It really is a thankless task for a referee on a day like this. It was a good run made by Graziani. While they're making progress almost rugby union style down that touchline. It was Junter, in fact, who had that uh, bicycle kick a few moments ago, and that really should serve as quite a warning to River Plate that they're happy to have a crack at goal from anywhere. And the cross could have bounced awkwardly, but Komitso had seen it. But still no goals here. Plenty of rain, no goals. of course have the most impregnable defence in the league well, they'd only conceded nine goals in their first 20 matches quite remarkably they'd only scored 20 in fact but they were sufficient to take them up into a second position nothing too much happening out there so I can continue to tell you about that and Boca Juniors down in seventh position 
We have a match in hand, by the way. They've conceded exactly a goal a game, 19 in 19 matches, and scored 24, so that's more than River Plate. And they concede a few more. This is Batista looking for it, but it was De Silva who hooked it in the air. Pushed aside by Serizuela. Now they do come forward in droves. That's a good ball played inside Cachufo and quickly flicked across there, turned aside and out of play by Marangoni. Charging back as he had to do, but just look at the conditions already now. With less than 20 minutes of the game gone. Well, I don't think we're ever going to reach the stage where it could be abandoned, but... Uh, it's certainly going to be a bit of a soggy mess as the River Plate Stadium by the end of the evening. And the ball continues to hold up more and more. The sort of night when you don't want your shoe laces, your boot laces to come undone, really. And you can hear the rain pitter pattering onto the microphones. certainly in good voice and enjoying it so far though there are no goals but all running out of players Borelli took up the chase and so many of these players of course will be looking to impress Carlos Bilardo, the Argentine national manager, with a view to Italy. Here's one of them, and here's a good chance. Junta has to turn inside, and eventually cracked it against the leg of the defender. But Junta was played into a great position by Graziani there. Could have had the first time shot, he deliberated, turned the ball back inside, and then when he did get his shot in, it cracked against the shin of the River Plate man chance had gone and jumped up and we saw how that really athletic overhead kick a few minutes ago has had perhaps the two best chances of the night that's well won for Boca Juniors but Fortune favoured River Plate on that occasion. The ball went straight back into their hands, their feet, as you like. And here's Zamora. He's got one man in the middle, and he might just find him. And there's the little flick header. It was a nice cross from Zamora, actually. Da Silva was coming in on it. The little flick header couldn't find the net. And on a night like this, one relies on the action being good, and there's Da Silva flying in for the header. And even the second touch might have been good enough to carry the ball in. And they still battle for it, but won by Stafuzza for Boca. That looked like a foul on Serizuela by Rodriguez. Well, a River Plate crowd desperate to see their team score a few goals against uh, anybody, and Boca Juniors would be the perfect opposition for that to happen. In their minds, they do have a free kick. Referee Ricardo Calabria right on the job with that one. And the free kick taken while well, Carlos Enrique is there. Sergio Batista says, you go away, I'll do it. And then gives him the ball short takes it back forward and they do find their men just around the edge of that penalty area quite nicely but in the end Stafutza and Cachufo are able to bring Boca Juniors clear and now well inside the River Plate half and they have to find another way through the alternative route Rodriguez seeks it Batista losing out in the challenge with Marangoni, but it's going to be a free kick in any event against the big central defender. 
He plays quite an interesting role, Batista, switching between central defence and midfield. They're happy for him to lope upfield on those strong surging runs and then cover for him. Marangoni, who spent one season in England playing for Sunderland, pumps that ball high and uh, it was an easy one to clear. Zamora is under pressure. <laughs> And uh, that was quite a spectacular tumble he took. And it was good enough to impress referee Calabria. River Plate's free kick and still it's River Plate nil, Boca Juniors nil. And the onus is very much on the home side to come and attack and go looking for the goals. Well, they've had two of the most disconcerting moments of the game so far, with uh, Junta firing just wide, and then hitting another shot against the defender. To balance that, River Plate have had a flicked header from Da Silva just off the mark. So far, one or two of the players that you'd expect to show haven't really been in evidence. People like Corti for River Plate, Marchesini of Boca Juniors, not seen much of him. It's a good contest nonetheless. Flag up on the far side. And there you have an aerial shot of the scene here in the River Plate Stadium, which tells you that it's raining. Mighty heavily. Pumps. And of necessity, the build up is slow. Rather deliberate. Marangoni at the hub of things for Boca. And they wait for support down that left touch line. And eventually, the ball is played out to Cachufo. Little flick forward from Ponce, and that might be a very good ball in these conditions. Solid work at the back by Higain. Couldn't find Zamora down that touchline though, and uh, passing is becoming more and more problematical as the evening goes on. As you saw there, and uh, Stafuzza didn't continue his run, so Graziani couldn't find him. So it remains scoreless. The one good thing to be said really is that uh, there has been no open hostility between the sides. On occasions like this, that can happen. Local rivalry almost demands it. I suppose the first goal could be of paramount importance in this game. It would psychologically give such a lift to the team scoring it. Boca Juniors are in the possession at the moment with Simon. Now with Stafutze and now with Rodriguez, who's not seen much of the ball down this right touch line. Wears 11 but plays on the right. Graziani, who wears 7, plays down the left. Except for this moment, but he's switched wings. Well, that was a clearance that uh, was perhaps not well advised. It's given Boca the ball back, really, inside the opposition half. Good little touch on, and a sliding challenge. And they all look to the referee, who says, play on. But those are the sort of tackles in these conditions that can persuade a referee to award penalties. So here we see, well, it was a brave challenge indeed by Hector Enrique in these conditions. Still it's nil-nil. And in very quickly there, Cachufo. That's a good little turn. And the referee allowed play to continue, which was excellent refereeing, otherwise it would have been a free kick. He played the advantage real well. 
The ball just flicked off the top of Stafutz's head. Daniela said the shot came raining in, but then everything's raining in on a night like this. It wasn't a bad cross at all. Stafutzer just getting his head to it, but here's a great chance and it must surely be a goal. Critical tackle there as Borelli looked a certain scorer. He only had to nick that ball into the open net, but Marchesini was across. And it seems that the referee and the linesman had made an earlier decision in any event. given so that's the closest we've come to a goal and Marchesini served his side well now it's Bocca's turn oh and it was a little fortunate was that ricochet goal kick so plenty of incident in this derby game if no goals spirit out there I think perhaps the players under conditions like this haven't got time to be uh, thinking of anything other than playing the game to the best of their ability Marangoni now who has got good ability good skills manages to get his pass in despite the fact he was stumbling all the way now the break is on for River Plate with Da Silva who's strong in these situations the defender slips it's given Da Silva a real opportunity here the defender comes across and makes the tackle penalty area a few minutes ago the answer was in the negative then and then in the negative now and that is why an excellent tackle and again it's Marchesini who has done tremendously well twice now and really saved Boca Juniors so Marchesini is really pressing his claims for a World Cup place tempers in this match so far his word is with the silver there I'm not quite sure why perhaps the silver said something in frustration when the penalty was not awarded to him but I think we saw perfectly on the replay how well Marchesini did in taking the ball from his toe end laid back by Latore choosing to lay that ball back via the additional boot of Higain all the way to Kamitso, who's hardly seen the ball and he won't be unhappy about that that's a good pass and De Silva seeking to get on the end of it an uncomfortable defending if calm defending by Stafutza. Oh, and there's a good chance. The break is on here for Bocca. One defender is out of it entirely. Oh, and he chose the wrong option. Surely there. There was no way that Graziani could have beaten Comizzo from that distance and that angle. And he did have two men up alongside him. And uh, I imagine they're not saying very polite things to Senor Graziani at this moment. Good to see that uh, referee Calabria still has his sense of humour, sharing a joke with Serizuela. Well, the bulk of the half has already been played. 
Still it's stalemate, and still Boca Juniors come looking for the first goal of the game. Again through Rodriguez, a long trailing boot of uh, the defender, denied him. Serizuela. La Torre. They really have to look for different options. Both sides. Although there have been chances, not better than that one that Varelli just couldn't convert a few moments ago, thanks to Marchesini. Looked like a push. The referee thought so too. Da Silva. Serizuela whacks that free kick up towards the edge of the Boca Juniors penalty area and they keep the move going through Higain out as far as Rodriguez one back by Enrique and now it's Graciani to a portion the half in uh, terms of ascendancy Rue Blake started quite well then Boca Juniors came back at their throats with a couple of very good attempts and here they are now ending the half on the attack that was just outside the penalty area and in any event the referee says there was no foul on La Torre who cannot believe it looks to the heavens and all he sees is rain there for all to see well there have been penalty appeals at both ends turned down by referee Calabria so it's uh, still Boca Juniors who've given as good as they've got in this half without question trying through La Torre but nil-nil it is and the only weather, winner at the moment is the weather They'll chase and they'll harry and they'll make life very uncomfortable indeed for Enrique. And a little bit of an altercation there involving Giunta. Quite unnecessary. And you got the feeling there that they were looking for a bit of bother. Zamora's got involved. Needlessly so. And now the pushing and shoving game really does go on. It seems you can hardly have a match in Argentina without this sort of incident. The ball had been controlled there, there was nothing wrong with the uh, challenge, that was just a good old-fashioned tussle. There there was, and uh, Junta complained that he'd got an elbow in his face, I think, from Enrique, who went to uh, say sorry if he'd done anything wrong. And now referee Calabria, for the first time in the game, has to have stern words, and uh, yellow cards are shown to the two involved. Carlos Enrique and Junta from River, the one from Boca, the yellow card of Beeson, still the jostling continues, <laughs> and he again walks away from it all, a shake of the head and says, well, I can't understand it all. So the first bookings of the game. Otherwise, the temperaments have been in good check. Good header out of defence straight to Ponce. And an inviting one to chase in these conditions. And Comitso suddenly appearing outside his penalty area to fly kick that ball into the crowd. Good job he got there. So the closing phases of the first half here in the River Plate Stadium. 
as Graziani goes down and uh, he gains challenge. Quite a spectacular fall as well by the little number seven from Boca. And it was sufficient to impress the referee. And uh, in fact, it's a goal. Yes, it is a free kick, surely. Gordia will have to go another seven or eight yards back from there before Ponce can deliver it with his left foot. Still, he complains the opposition are too close. Marangoni, number five, is holding hands. Well, I didn't know that uh, he and Batista were so friendly. And indeed, the two captains are being called over by the referee. And I think he's saying, come on, lads, it's nearly half-time, the conditions are appalling. Let's get on with the football and forget the animosity. And let Pons take the free kick. So slightly unnerving moments coming towards the half-time whistle for the home side. There is Pons' free kick. It was out by Batista. No one there, though, to carry the ball forward. And a rather wayward ball from Boca. So we're reaching the stage now where we anticipate it being scoreless at half-time. The game has not been dull. And the quality of football has only suffered marginally because of the conditions. Good clearance from Enrique. And here come River Plate. Out on that far side is Zamora. Well, we've seen him get a goal or two. Not on that occasion, though. And uh, that's gone for a corner. So, Boca getting themselves into a little bit of a web of trouble towards half-time. De Silva comes to take up his usual position inside the penalty area. Driven in, and again it was who came to meet it with full force. Couldn't keep the header down, but the warning was there. He can certainly get on the end of these with his height, six feet two of him again, and he bullets the header over. are ending the half quite strongly. Here is Da Silva and uh, Zamora offside. Oh, it's amazing they've managed to light those firecrackers with all this dampness around. consistent and as we start to look at referee Calabria that means it's close to half time with no goals in the River Plate Stadium between the home side and Boca Juniors their great rivals from across the city in the Argentine First Division at the end of the programme. That's a good ball. And over on that far side, it found Graziani. 
Marchesini plays it forward into the vacant space. And uh, once more, this referee played a good advantage there, but oh dear. Trouble down there this time. Marangoni and Borrelli picking themselves up, but Da Silva has not been able to do so. And he really was the victim there of the first flying tackle that came in. But the referee played an advantage. Well, we can see here how he took the dive over the top of the defender's boot. Cachufo. Well, there's more sort of determination than anything else in all that, I think. But the referee saw it that way too. But it's still River Plate's free kick. Serizuela. And the dying moments of this first half here. Flick on is towards Graciani, who will not get round Serizuela. Safely shepherded back. Not quite sure whether Ponce is laughing or grimacing. He didn't do either very convincingly. Anyway, River Plate. Back in the thick, thick of it, sent sprawling once more. Certainly tasted this turf a time or two tonight. The referee seems to be thoroughly enjoying it all. Now here's a semblance of a chance because there's some space for Gordillo to deliver a good cross here. And there's some more! scored in so many of our matches in uh, Argentina soccer that it's not surprising it's his name that's gone on the score sheet first if there'd been a sweepstake his name would have come out uh, pretty early on I imagine as the favourite to score the first goal the play continues so we're well into injury time being Added on here in this first half in Buenos Aires. With the ball given away, and maybe a chance now as Graziani flings it across there. And up comes the supporting Simon. And a charge on again led by Gordillo. We've not seen much of Gordillo, to be honest, raiding down that right touchline, but what he did do, it was to great effect. And uh, well, the goalkeeper must put this one out. Ooh, he's carrying it on. Well, oh, this is brave. Oh, is it brave or is it mad? He's going to have to get back now. Loses a shin pad on the way. Well, that was rather reckless goalkeeping, if anything. See what he was going to gain by doing that. It wasn't as though it was the last minute of the match. Play goes on and on. Zamora this time can't hang on though, but Batista wins it back. <laughs> There's a, a 
smile beneath that rugged exterior. Still we play on with Corti. Hardly seen him. Another cross towards Da Silva. And they come away once more. All I can think of is that referee Calabria is enjoying himself, otherwise we'd have had that half-time whistle. The stoppages really have only been for a couple of tickings off. One injury to De Silva, I can remember. Not much else. But uh, Bocker still looking for an equaliser before the break. Oh, and he just stretches, and has he kept it in? Well, whether he did or not, the ball stuck in the goalkeeper's legs. Ponce managed to turn that ball back from right on the dead ball line. It's stuck in between Kamitso's legs. And so Bocker still trail. It's a good header forward. And Ponce was onside, and again the rain just held things up, I think, on the turf. But a goal kick it is. And surely now River Plate are going to go to their dressing rooms, a goal to the good. And they will be the happier of the two sides, as again we have a look at uh, Senor Calabria. Still the play goes on, and there he races the whistle to the lips, points to the dressing room. It's half-time here then, in the River Plate Stadium, there's the scoreline for you. Not much to separate the sides, that one goal scored by Zamora in the dying seconds of the half. So we look forward to having your company in that second half, it's River Plate 1, Boca Juniors...